The boys started yelling as loud as they could, trying to warn him. As he reached the wishing well, <laughs> so hard to say. As he reached the wishing well, Stanley Jenkins seemed to hear their cries. He suddenly stopped and turned around. Then he let out a scream more piercing and dreadful than any of the boys on the ridge, but it was too late. I arrived to find our front window smashed. No glass on the pavement below told me that somebody had broken in. Well, he can't have his keys when he's start bollock naked, can he? Well, where are you going to store them? Where are you going to store them? Under your bollock, probably. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, I think I'm about to die of TSS. Oh. <laughs> well, if that happens, I promise <laughs> I'll come back then. at the end if we get haunted so you don't have to. I've got dandruff all over mine. I'm a a flaky little bitch. Uh Anyway. You need some scalp treatment. Oh, I do. I'm going to get a scalp. How do you say it? Scalp. 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 (laughs) You cannot. It's not scalp. Scalp. It's scalp. I've got an itchy scalp. Yeah. Yeah. I've got an itchy scalp. No. That's like, (laughs) that's like saying, how do you say it? Orange or orange? I do say all right. <laughs> and I, I will fight anyone <laughs> to the death. I will <laughs> die on this hill. Orange. Orange. Yeah. Shall we do the introduction yes. before we get into this? Okay. Welcome, Welcome to, to episode, episode 60, 60 of Ghost, Ghost Hands. So anyway, Orange. It's um Orange. No. An Orange. No. I'd like to make it clear that I haven't got, da- well, I have got dandruff because I'm a dry bitch at the minute. I'm dry. Oh. My skin's dry, my head's dry, my skin, everything's dry, my face is dry. Enough. I've been more hydrated than I've ever been. I think I'm overhydrated. No. That's the problem. I don't think you no, are. No, I over. think I am. I don't think you are. I think I am. Okay. Uh, okay, hi. Uh, <laughs> I've got this massive fucking spot on my face, which oh. is really great. I tried to put some of that amazing concealer on it, and I was like, oh, now it looks stupid. So we'll dab it in. Oh, it's gone. Mm. So now my spot's back. Oh, I see. Oh, by the way, that concealer, <gasps> I've ordered it. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, the, the concealer is amazing. I ha- I've right. just ordered it. It hasn't arrived yet, but Smoothly. I can't wait. It's very nice. I get it in my arse, Noel. <laughs> I mean, get it in my arse. Get that concealer right in my ass, please. In my ass, Noel. Right in my ass. Uh- <laughs> Jesus. Holy shit. How are you feeling? Are you hungover? Are you tired? Are you, what's, what's going um, on? How am I feeling? Um, in yourself. I'm actually feeling all right. I had a really nice gig last night and it was my first one of the new year. Oh, yes. Who runs that? Um, Maddie. Okay. I can't remember. Maddie. Okay. I can, I'll can. show you. Um, just like. Was it really nice? It was really nice. Oh, that's good. And it was like, uh, I just, I turned up and they were like, can you open? I was like, uh. I keep both fucking out, you know, and you're just like, It's oh, so oh, annoying. God. And they're like, just do it. And I was like, oh, fine. Um. But you know when you're just like, oh, it just all came together. Yeah, and, that's And it felt nice. really, like, confident and good. Oh, God. So, yeah, it was one of those gigs that you're like, oh, yeah, of course I remember how to fucking do God, this. yeah, it's like riding a bike. Yeah. Riding a fucking bike. I mean, you know, they, it goes up and down, but it was nice to kick off the year with a... Mm. Stunning. So, um... I watched somebody come back from a, um... From, uh, misgendering someone the other day. What? Which was very... It's like bumhole clenching. Oh no, what happened? Because well, it was just like they were talking about somebody in the front row. And as we all know, don't we just don't assume gender anymore. No. You have to get used to saying people instead of man and woman. I mean, I understand that it's hard. But he was like, I was referring to them as a he and then said, Oh no, it's a woman. It's what? a woman. I know it's really bad. Oh god. I was like, <gasps> <laughs> Oh fuck's sake. It was really bad. But then kind of came back for it, apologised and all the rest of it, and the person was very understanding so yeah, that was okay. nice and um, where was that top secret comedy club oh wow okay. yeah it was good though should do better though definitely that's, a, that's one of the top comedy clubs definitely well i think he came back from it and was kind of like oh, i apologize yeah so it's like well that's what you can do isn't it? And very political ghost hunts it's got yeah it's got very political how are very you politically political. like are you politically are i'm you not looking sure forward to the elections i didn't know there was an election there's going to be an election this year when sunak's going to call one for what? Um, what are we electing? General, general. What? The general election. 
She's as fuck. You're skating on as much thin ice as no, I am. I'm oh my really God. political I don't think days. I've changed my tampon. What? I don't think I've changed my tampon. Are you about to fucking... No, I'm just, the... I'm just... I think I'm about to die of TSS. Oh. <laughs> well, if that happens, <laughs> I promise I'll come back then. at the end for We Get Haunted so you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. If I do drop dead. Um. Okay. Well, I'll vote for you then if you die. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, politically, <laughs> I'm great. How are you politically? Yeah, really good politically. Yeah, Thank good. You. Yeah. Great. And um, yeah, so it's a general election this year. Someone swallowed a census, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> the general election. Um, Swallowed a census. Um, what does that even mean? <laughs> oh, I think I've got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what? What does that mean? What does that mean? Not a census. A dictionary? What does that mean? No. Someone swallowed. Someone's someone's swallowed a someone birth charter. Someone swallowed. <laughs> someone knows when people someone were born. Someone swallowed the the the, the election <laughs> electoral roll. <laughs> Mm, that sounds delicious. <laughs> Yum. I'm very hungry. Oh, do Greg's do one? I'd have three electoral <laughs> rolls right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Someone swallowed a sentence. I am that so sorry for episode, our so politics huns in the audience. Thank you um, for giving us that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Great. <laughs> um, Wish I was dead. <laughs> it's my turn to pick a tarot. Is it? Yes. Okay, go I've for it. i forward to it all I'm excited. My it's life. got to be a good one because we've had a really good one. That you do that so well. Thank you. I really. Yeah. What do you call that? Cut them. Yeah, what's that? Like? I don't know. It's a swerve. Okay, a lovely swerve. Okay, yeah, you're under a lot of pressure because there's been some good ones recently that oh, we've picked. Shit. You don't want to be the one to ruin that run. That one. <gasps> yep. Oh, I oh. swear we always get this cunt. It's a page of cups, and he's got a fish and a goblet. That's Tommy. He's got a little oh, a, a fish. Lawrence Luan Bowen. It's like um, you know those like really like shit Greek restaurants where yeah. you can imagine that's like page of cup. Page of cup. Let's have a look. Yeah, we have definitely had him before. I think it's a good one. We always get the same cards. Oh, you keep moving what the. <laughs> <laughs> For those who are just on all with my page of cups. I've just. She made it fly across oh, the room. That was scary. She's a witch. Okay. Uh, page of cups, page of cups. I'm just singing a song Fish about the, the page of cups while I find the page. So he's in da, pink da, da, leggings. Da, da, he's da, in a, a smock. He's in a um, a beautiful turban. Da, da, da. And he's holding a very victorious looking goblet and a fish is poking out. Well, how many? Is it three? No. no. Page. Oh, is it one of those? Oh, fuck off. I think it might be one of the picture cards. <laughs> I mean, I know they're all picture they're cards. They're all picture cards, but thank you. <laughs> Is that picture the front, cards, maybe? the page, the page, the page, the page, the page, the page. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to get carpal tunnel with all this fucking... <laughs> That book is so thumbed. Oh, it's well thumbed, isn't it? This it's has got well DNA thumbed. or The Lovers. We have never had that one before. Yeah. Um, oh, what? <laughs> Just. Okay, I'll look it up on Biddy Tarot. Well, you have a look, and then I am going to continue to find. Well, well as always happens, you find it on there, and then I find it in here, and then yeah, it's just yeah, a farce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm literally going through it page by fucking page. Aha, did you get it? Because it's page. Yes, that's really funny. <laughs> oh, got it. I've got it. I've got oh, it. me too. Oh, See, it was fucking typical, isn't it? <laughs> the page represents curiosity and creativity. It encourages an open mind to new possible ideas. Oh, Which, very good. Because we got pissed the other night. We did, and I'm and really made excited some plans, by that. Didn't we? Yeah, made we some did. plans. Can you remember that? No, I do, yeah. Good, just check it. Good. Yeah. So they're just going to be like... <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're talking what about. What plans? Um, um, so that is accurate. Creati yeah. Creativity and curiosity. We're going to delve in to the exploration of the mat now. Destination unknown. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to kick off with a story? Have you got yes, one? Yes, I've got one. Oh, I'd love to I've hear got one. one. I've just put an Instagram story up of Adam's eggs. Have you seen it? And I'm getting so many messages being like, can you fuck off? Please. What do you mean? Have a look on my Instagram. Oh, no, I saw that. That makes me feel sick. Yeah, he decided that he was going to... Um, he saw he saw, he saw saw a TikTok hack, uh, which is exactly what's wrong with the world nowadays. But he saw a TikTok hack where you can make your poached eggs in a sieve. So you oh. do your water, you put the sieve in, and you put the eggs in, which seems, in theory, like a great idea because yeah. you can just lift them up. There's no shit at the bottom of the pan. Yeah. But actually, what happened is they just didn't fucking cook and he ate raw eggs for breakfast. But because he was so adamant that they were fine, yeah. He just ate raw eggs. 
Oh, I see. That's, so that's like the male stuff. He's probably, he's just dropped me off in the car. He's probably going to shit himself on the way back. Oh, oh God. And do you know what, Adam, if you're listening? I know the, you're not because you never do listen. But if you are... The okay. close-up of those eggs made right. me feel absolutely nauseous. I'm getting a lot of hate, I'll be honest. Yeah, I getting think... Getting a lot of hate for us. It made me feel really sick. And it was called... The Wishing Well. Oh, well. Yeah. Caught up in your wishing well. It's, uh, it's okay. Not particularly long. I've gone, I've gone short You've and ignored my then. song. I serenaded I said, what you. What did you say? Do you not remember that I'm song? I'm sorry, I'm not interested. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry, that was really hard. Sorry, I just sang. I know I've no interest in your oyster. Okay, what? <laughs> She's lost Susie the fucking just keeps, biscuit. She keeps coming on two minutes. Really, what's she talking about? I sang "Wishing Well." Yeah, all right. I'm talking about what you said the other night. <laughs> what is wrong with her? She got really drunk and came on to me, and it was really no. Okay, you're, you're sorry, clearly Susie. paranoid that you had I'm too much sorry, to drink, <laughs> and you're now putting it on me. Uh, I had like a few Proseccos. You're like, do you remember that? Because the lady doth protest too much. Yeah, I have a feeling you've got something to hide. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. Do you want to hear the story? No. My eyelash is stuck to my bottom. <laughs> so I'm like, do you no, want to story? No, I don't, you crazy bitch. <laughs> Aren't you swallow a census and get a fucking oh, no. electoral roll for us? Can we um, cut that, Tim? Can we cut that? No. no. No, it's a big no. Um, but no, I can't wait for your story. Thank you so much. Please go ahead. (laughs) This is giving me the evils. Okay. Many years ago, there was an exclusive boarding school in England that had a scout troop. What's that about, you ask? Mm. I've no idea. Beavers. The leader of the scout troop was a teacher, and one weekend per month, he would take the scouts on a camping trip. There was one young boy in the scout troop who was very disobedient and disruptive. His name was Stanley Jenkins. Mm. Yes. I don't imagine, like, the twats of the schoolroom to be called Stanley. Stan? Yeah. No matter how many times the teacher told him off, he would never listen. One weekend, the scouts went camping in the English countryside. They got permission to set up camp on a farmer's land. The spot was on a ridge overlooking a deep valley. The teacher warned the boys not to go off wandering on their own and told them that under no circumstances were they allowed to go into the valley. While the teacher and the other scouts were pitching the tent, Stanley Jenkins and his friends were sitting around in the grass. They were too lazy to help set up camp. Instead, they went looking for some kind of mischief they could get up to. I'm getting Dudley Dursley vibes. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's all you have to say on the matter, great. <laughs> Susie is not in the mood no, today please, for please chat. carry on. As Stanley Jenkins gets <laughs> down into the valley, he noticed a field that was surrounded by a barbed wire fence. Oh, well, it was a train. At one corner of the field, there was an old stone well. It looked like the field was never used and it was overgrown with weeds and brambles. Just then, they saw the farmer who owned the land coming in with his dog. As he passed by, Stanley Jenkins waved at him and the farmer stopped to talk. What's in that field down there? Asked Stanley Jenkins. I imagine that's how he talks. Mm. Oh, we've got to do that. No, no, you did that posh. Did I? What's in that field down there? Yeah, yeah. Like Boris Johnson's son. In fact, doesn't he have a child called Stanley? He has many children. So many. We Probably about seven called Stanley. All of them on the electoral roll that I swallowed. Mm. Nom, 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 nom. What's in that field down there? Said Stanley Jenkins. The one with the well inside it. That's the wishing well, the farmer replied. But you're not allowed to go down there. I hope your teacher told you that. Wishing well? Said Stanley Jenkins. You mean if you throw some money into the well, you can make a wish? The farmer let out a grim laugh. <laughs> I wouldn't know, he said. That's what they call it, but nobody around here goes near the wishing well. And all the years I've lived here, I've never set foot in that field. Mm. What's the matter with it? <laughs> Stanley Jenkins. Piece of shit, this kid. He's, I hate him. All I know is the cows and the sheep keep away from it. Even my old dog wouldn't go through that field, and neither should you boys. If you've got a brain in your heads, they say it's haunted. Haunted? Stanley... <laughs> that someone, Stanley Judkins, his name is now. Haunted, Stanley Jenkins scoffed. Haunted by who? Three women and a man, said the farmer gravely. Who are they? Asked Stanley Jenkins. It all happened before my time, said the farmer, but I was told they died in the well or were found dead in it at least. I saw them once. It was twilight and I was standing on this very ridge. My old dog saw them too. They came out of the bushes and went crawling round. Four of them, just black rags and white bones. It seemed as if I could hear their bones clacking as they moved. I couldn't make out their faces, but all I could see was their teeth. The boys let out a collective gasp. (gasps) What happened then? Stanley Jenkins asked. I don't know, said the farmer. 
My old dog took off running and I took off running after him. So take my advice, boys. Stay clear of that wishing well if you know what's good for you. What a load of bull. Bull? Bull. 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 Shit. Said Stanley Jenkins. <laughs> I don't believe a word of it. The next evening, the teacher gathered the scouts in a... <laughs> I thought he said in a dickhead count. He didn't say that. <laughs> the next evening, the teacher gathered the scouts and did a head count. He noticed one of the boys was missing. After doing a roll call, he discovered that the missing boy was, in fact, Stanley Jenkins. None of the other scouts seemed to have any idea where he was. Then one boy spoke up. Maybe he went down to the wishing well, sir. <laughs> Please, sir. I can I have some more? I just want some soup. The teacher's face went pale. The wishing well, he gasped. But you were all given strict instructions to not go down there. The scouts followed the teacher as he walked up to the top of the ridge and looked down into the valley below. And the down in the valley of the shadow of death. Nothing left. The light was fading and it was getting cold, but there wasn't a breath of wind in the air. Can anyone see him? The teacher asked. There he is, said one of the boys. Getting over the barbed wire fence. Do you see him? Yes, it's him, said another boy. I recognise his sweater. Now he's making his way towards the wishing mail. The little idiot. Did I say wishing mail? Yeah. Yeah, fine. Actor mail. I've just had an actor mail. Delicious. The little idiot, the teacher growled. At that moment, one of the boys let out a high-pitched scream and covered his eyes. Do a scream? Ah! Oh, great. Sounded like you had, like, a throat full of cake. (laughs) I wish. What's that black thing on the path? Cried another boy, crawling on all fours. It's a woman. Oh, God. Don't let me look at her. Stop it, the teacher said loudly. Get a hold of yourselves. I'm going down there. Hancock and Fartleby, you run to the farmer's house and call for help. (laughs) Fartleby? Fartleby. Wow. I was reading that last night and I was like, it can't be Fartleby. There has to be another way of getting it. Is this around. like an American author who's written it? Well, how I, that think does sound British bummer. surnames are. Stanley Jenkins. Yeah, and you're like, no one's actually called that, but Fartleby. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, and then the other boy, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> yeah, and the Queen was there. <laughs> and they all had a tea before getting martyrs. And then they saw David Beckham. <laughs> And all of Manchester United. <laughs> I think it's fucking hilarious that people in America support Manchester United. Have you been to Manchester? <laughs> yeah, do not. Fuck. I mean, like, oh, listen, don't get annoyed at me by saying Manchester, but all I'm saying is it's not the best place in the world, is it? Okay. <laughs> I do love it. I live close by. Anyway, Hancock and Fartleby, you run to the farmer's house and call for help. The rest of you boys stay here and do not move. So you know where we're at. You can see they can see Stanley, but yeah. they can also see a woman oh, on all woman. fours behind yeah. him. The teacher ran off, leaving the boys alone on the ridge, staring down at the field below. To their horror, they saw Oh my god, that scared me then. The Popo. The, it's the five O. <laughs> they saw another black figure emerge from the bushes, then another and another. They saw Stanley Jenkins making his way towards the wishing while he didn't seem to not- notice the black figures approaching him, shuffling forward with their arms outstretched. The boys started yelling as loud as they could, trying to warn him. As he reached the wishing well, (laughs) so hard to say. As he reached the wishing well, Stanley Jenkins seemed to hear their cries. He suddenly stopped and turned around. Then he let out a scream more piercing and dreadful than any of the boys on the ridge, but it was too late. Ah! (laughs) Is that piercing? No, that sounded like a Pond 5 generic scream. (laughs) From (laughs) (laughs) epidemicsounds.com. The royalty-free ones, because they're Because <laughs> we're a lawyer, not bitches. <laughs> the black figures closed in on him until he was surrounded on all sides, and then they pounced. The boys stared at the scene below in a terrified silence. They could hardly breathe as they watched the horrific struggle. The hood of one of the figures fell back, revealing a white skull with stringy wisps of hair. Their gnarled, bony fingers were ripping and tearing at Stanley Jenkins, and soon his awful screaming ceased. The boys spotted their teacher running towards the fields. He scrambled through the barbed wire fence, but then he stopped and wouldn't go any further. The farmer arrived with a number of policemen. The boys pointed down at the field below and screamed, They've got him! They've got him! Over and over again. The policemen ran down into the valley. The headmaster arrived and all of the the boys were transported back to the school, some of them so traumatised that they later left. The teacher stayed there with the police all night. The next morning at dawn, they found what was left of Stanley Jenkins at the bottom of the wishing well. He'd been torn to pieces. His parents came to collect the remains in an Asda bag for life. No, they didn't. The farmer put up <laughs> another barbed wire fence and circling the field and erecting large signs with danger and keep out written in large black letters. Locals in the area say that the field is now haunted by five ghostly black figures 
Three men, a man, and a young boy. Three men, a man. <laughs> what? Three men, <laughs> a woman, and a young boy. Oh. Ow! 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 He's in the ghost family now. So who are they? We don't know. Oh. We don't know. Open ended. We don't know. Yeah, they're just. Well, now they've killed him and now he's. Now Stanley's part of the troop. Stanley's part of the troop. So if anyone goes into that field, Mr. Stanley Jenkins will come <coughs> and get you. He'll be like, hey, stop it. I'm going to fucking murder you. <laughs> I'm going to fucking murder you, plebs. <laughs> Peasants. You stupid poor people. <laughs> I'm going to get you. <laughs> you come from a broken home. If you don't have an American I'm Express, you. I'm going to shaft you with a fucking knife in your stomach. <laughs> oh, God. Um, that was very political, really, wasn't it? So we are so political today. So political. So political. Political. You know, there's a podcast called The Rest Is Politics. Um, yeah. We should do that. We should be guests. They actually share our studio at Spotify. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Would, oh. Would you like Imagine going on a political podcast. I don't even think I'd be able to. I could never, well, actually. I just don't know what I'd say. No, I, I, I would have to try and like make a joke about something, and then I would, um, my yeah. ignorance would really seep through. <laughs> Politics, am I right? <laughs> yeah, I, I would. Just, <laughs> I would say something absolutely dreadful. Yeah, God, um, the economy. What a fucking yeah, state. Yeah, it would is. be generic or just awful. Yeah. Um. Anyway, um. Chancellor of the Exchequer. <clears throat> wow, that's what I'd say. What did you say? Chancellor of the Exchequer. Wow. Chancellor. Chancellor, of the Exchequer. <laughs> wow, and that's all I'd say, and then I'd move on. Are you ready for a story? No. All right, well, fuck you. <laughs> yes, please. You ready for a story? Hit me with a story. Um, my husband has a towel on his face. Fuck's sake. Hurry up in the shower. We have to leave soon. I yelled towards the bathroom at my husband. Every year, at some point in the days leading up to Christmas, our families get together. We were already making bad timing when he realised he needed a shower. I'd misplaced my earrings, paranoid about making us even later. As I walked past the bathroom, I noticed the door wide open. My husband stood there, still naked from having recently departed the shower. He had draped a pastel orange towel over his head. I thought you were going to say dick and I was going to get really angry. <laughs> Why? Because it's just such a man thing to do, isn't it? Is it's it? Like, look what at me. <laughs> I've got a fucking towel on my dick. I don't think I've ever seen a man do that. I've seen it so many times. Really? Yeah, loads. God, I haven't lived. It's like, uh, look how manly I am because I've got a penis. Oh, God. Using it like a little... Just the yeah. word, like a little fucking peg. Yeah. Well done, you peggy twats. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Hope you're proud of yourselves. <laughs> he had draped a pastel orange towel over his head, one that I didn't even know we owned. It didn't cross my mind at the time, just a fleeting thought. He swayed gently from side to side, like a swinging pendulum. <laughs> I giggled. Stop being silly. You know, we're running late. Have you seen my earrings? Immediately upon entering the bedroom, I spotted them, gently glistening on the bedside table. Relieved, I yelled again, Never mind, found them. As I put the first in, my gaze fell directly ahead of me at the painting of a lighthouse hung on our bedroom wall. My husband was never a stranger to local markets. He always had a talent for buying the strangest items. I've grown used to it, but this painting always stood out to me as a bizarre purchase. The lighthouse stands as the subject, with a series of indistinct, colourful blobs painted around the bottom. A crowd of nondescript people, I'd always assumed. On the frame, at the bottom, a title or note or quote of some kind had been etched in. The Jolly Good Fellows. My trail of thought was cut short as I failed to get the second earring in. I'd stabbed myself slightly and began to head to the bathroom for the assistance of the mirror. He was still standing there. Oh, hang on. Swaying. So is he cock out? How long? T yeah. Everything naked apart from the orange towel over his head. That is really that's not even, that's disturbing. Very disturbing. Like Just get that image in your head right now, like this. Like that. Cock going that way, head going. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. <clears throat> oh, that's horrible. Honey, we really need to go soon. Please get ready. Can you stop acting like a twat? Yeah, put your dick away. Put your dick away. <laughs> put it away. <laughs> um, I approached the mirror. Seeing no blood, I breathed a sigh of relief and put the second earring in. The whole time, from the corner of my eye, I could still see him swaying. The towel blocked any view of his head. My patience was wearing thin. Had he even sorted his clothes out yet? Honey, come on! I spoke as I lifted the towel from his face. Peering under, I expected to see him smiling, acting playfully. 
I felt a little bad, but being ever aware of the ticking clock, sometimes I have to remind him to have urgency, even when he's just playing around. His eyes were wide, his face emotionless. He stared forward as though there wasn't a wall a few feet from his face, like he was looking just a little past everything. He stopped swaying as the towel was removed, but remained in this state. I gently held his hand. Come with me, let's sit down. I knew something was wrong. As I guided him to the bed and sat him down, his arm felt limp as though the muscles were void of any connection to the brain. Uh, let's get you some clothes, okay? We could talk about what's wrong. I tried to speak calmly as I turned around and searched through the wardrobe. I began asking questions, trying to take his mind off things. My mind, while still aware of the time, was now more focused on my husband's well-being. Noticing a lack of answers or responses, I turned around to face him. Have you ever jumped at the lack of something? Usually we jump at the sudden presence of something we're not expecting, perhaps a sudden movement of an object we thought would remain motionless. But when I saw my husband wasn't behind me, my body jolted slightly. I hadn't heard him move or felt him walk past me. I expected him to still be on the bed. The lack of him was enough of a shift to shock me. Honey? I yelled slightly, wondering where he was. I walked past the bathroom. There he was, orange towel draped over his head, swaying gently at the same rhythm as before. <laughs> oh. If you don't respond to me, I'm calling an ambulance. I needed a quick answer. My mind jumped straight for, to some sort of brain injury, perhaps from falling over in the shower. I knew that acting fast is the only chance you have to minimize damage. He didn't answer. I removed the towel from his head as I dialed emergency services. Again, he stopped swaying. As I explained everything to them, I watched as he knelt down, picked the towel back up and draped it back over his head. The swaying continued. Paramedics arrived shortly. He put up no fight and allowed them to escort him to the ambulance in a wheelchair. I kept asking questions about whether he'd be okay. They had to keep assuring me that whilst the hospital would do everything they could, they had no information to go off of. My racing mind looked past this and continued to ask similar questions regardless. He kept trying to stand up whilst en route to the hospital, yet would be compliant when gently pushed back down. As long as someone was guiding him, he would follow. When this stopped, he'd try and move. The same had happened back home. He only got up and left once I'd sat him down and let go of him. Through the sound of the sirens wailing overhead, the bumps of the ambulance's journey, and trying to hold back my tears, I could hear a familiar tune. My husband, showing almost no other signs of activity, was gently humming. I leaned in to get a better listen. It was a very low tone, and each note seemed to begin as a hum, yet end as a more of a raspy breath. Oh. Oh, creepy bastard. I still got his cock out. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> um, no, I hope. For everyone's sake, yes. Oh, new Susie. Um, it was a very low tone, and each note seemed to be begin as a hum, yet end as a more of a raspy breath. Each one seemed to continue for slightly longer than they were supposed to. But I recognised this tune. He was humming, For he's a jolly good fellow. Arriving at the hospital felt like a blur. Everyone knew exactly where they were going. I was following along, completely lost in this maze of signs and painted lines intended to guide. We had left the ambulance and arrived at his assigned bed before I could process what was happening. As soon as he was laid down, the confusing blur continued. Uh, Ma'am, could we borrow you in the next room? We just need you to fill out some paperwork. Well, not until I know if my husband's okay, I snapped. We understand, but the best chance at survival is if we understand everything. This paperwork will take care of that. I was assured that a doctor would be in the room shortly and that my husband was in good hands. I shouldn't have listened. They certainly didn't. I explained that he kept trying to get up and walk about, but they clearly underestimated him. I hadn't even helped the lady fill out my husband's personal information before we were informed that he was missing. He can't be far. Keep an eye on all entrances. The staff spoke to each other urgently. I was asked to remain calm and continue helping with the paperwork, but I refused. I attempted to run around the hospital to join the search, but was quickly told that I don't have the authority to be wandering around alone. I hardly cared. My husband was the only thing on my mind, but I didn't want to be escorted out and risk not seeing him at all when he's found. I took my efforts outside the hospital. I looked around the parking area and then the nearby streets. After an hour and a half, I was still wondering, with no word from the hospital of any findings in the building. I began to walk home, hoping that somehow he had remembered the way. It was a 20 minute walk. I couldn't imagine that he'd survived in his state, let alone managed to correctly identify the entire journey home, but it was worth a shot. I arrived to find our front window smashed. 
No glass on the pavement below told me that somebody had broken in. Well, he can't have his keys when he's start bollock naked, can he? Yeah, well, where are you going to store them? Where are you going to store them? Under your bollock, probably. Yeah. <laughs> your asshole. <laughs> there. Perhaps I should... Oh. Hi, Barry and June from next door. <laughs> whilst fishing your keys out of your fucking arm. Sorry, I can't see. I've got an orange towel on my face and cock out. Sorry, my keys are just <laughs> up between my thigh and my bollock. <laughs> the gooch. The gooch. Yeah, <laughs> gooch oh. keys. Um... <laughs> Uh, perhaps I should have been more cautious, but I just wanted to know if my husband was inside. My hand shook as I struggled to get the key in the lock. Once I did, I turned the handle and ran inside. I don't even think I closed the door behind me. Honey, are you here? I don't know if I was surprised to see what I saw or whether I expected this. There he was in the bathroom, orange towel draped over his head, Fuck swaying out. gently. This time, a pool of blood collected on the tile floor below, dripping from his right arm. Cuts on his legs and torso told the full story. He had no concept of pain. He smashed the window to get in, to get back to this exact spot. The injuries meant nothing to him. For whatever reason, his mind was focused only on anchoring itself in that bathroom under the gentle weight of a towel. Crying, I approached him and lifted the towel slightly. I hardly even noticed the blood soaked into it. His eyes were red. Had he even blinked since this began? The humming continued. I should have contacted emergency services immediately, but instead I just stood there. I stared into his eyes, pretending he was staring back into mine. I wanted him back. Gently, he lifted an arm and pulled the towel back down over his face. I don't know how long I stood there sobbing. Please talk to me, I love you. The gentle humming would have been comforting, but the slight inconsistency of the rhythm was a subtle reminder that my husband had no awareness. I thought back to all our recent conversations, everything we've ever done together. Lately, he's had a fascination with the ocean. I could never understand it. A horizon swallowed by the forever swaying and crashing of waves never appealed to me. He used to tell me all sorts of facts. One that particularly disturbed me was of an old tradition of placing a towel over the faces of sailors who had passed whilst at sea. Once back on the shore, you'd place a towel over their face as you waited for somebody to arrive with help or a hearse. I took a closer look at the painting, the blobs at the bottom of the lighthouse. I'd always assumed them to be nondescript people with little detail added, though I'd never understood why the blobs were so colorful. Only then did I realize- Towels. <laughs> Bunch of towels. Bunch of fucking towels. It's done now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this has all been an advert. Uh, for the January sales, so get on it. Bloody lovely towels. BT Dub's done now, if uh, you do want to sponsor us. We're more than, we're more than open to it. Oh, I'd be happy being sponsored Thrilled. by them. Yeah. Um, only then did I realise they were not a crowd gathered at the bottom of the lighthouse. There were dozens of bodies laid out on the shore. Pastel coloured towels were draped over their faces. Perhaps my husband is there now, forever visiting the lighthouse, staring into the horizon as it's swallowed by the ocean. Wow. What a metaphor for life. Wow. I don't understand the ending though. Can I have you no please idea. No. I think what's happened is. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I started today. that sentence because <laughs> I've got no is idea. Is he dead? Is he like. Is I he, think is he a dead she sailor? was seeing his ghost, but then. Maybe he what? died at sea and he's been with her all along. Yeah, but then would all the hospital staff see him? Mm. Mind you, I suppose if you're a ghost, you can show yourself to whoever you want. Cock That's out there. That's true. That's yeah, I know. Rogue, isn't it? I'm assuming she put a lovely fluffy Dunelm towel around his waist. Yeah. Uh, let's hope so. Or a cock sock. But I'm just imagining him at the traffic lights, towel on, cock out. <laughs> Waiting for the green Wait. man. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> I, I, I'm, it's a disturbing image, isn't it? It's disturbing, and I don't mm. know mm. what happened. Maybe tell us what you think, dear listener. What you think the ending is? Because me and Susie are being thick as dishes today. <laughs> yeah, we really are. Um, well, I lovely. enjoyed it. the The tension was all there. Yeah, listen. you know what I mean. Bit of oceanic Let tension. You got another one? I have, but I've started doing them in a very annoying way. So, okay. Oh yeah, I've got, I've got some. Um, oh, by the way, actually, can I read an article from um, probably the Mail Online if I'm on it? Go for it. Um, it's an update of you know that haunted painting. 
from West oh, Sussex. Oh fuck! Yeah, we should have we should have got that. I know. Is it back on sale? Well, someone yeah. died. Yeah. So um, what they have? No, no, no. This oh. is bad. It is bad. Let me just. Okay. I've got, should I read out this after? Yes, please. Okay. So you do that while um, I find my thing. So I wanted to bring up because of the haunted lighthouse painting. It made me think of the haunted uh, painting of the girl yes. um, who was found in some charity shop. And do you remember, we've had loads of messages from people being like, oh my God, you have to buy it. Yeah. And then we were obviously too late. I would have someone, loved to. Um, I think someone went on this morning being like... Did they? Yeah, she was like, I bought it. And anyway, oh. um, so this is an update of the haunted painting. If you um, just type in haunted painting UK... And you'll see it. It's like, um, it's actually, she looks a little bit like me as a kid. Do you know what? That Whoever bought that painting is fuck, is gonna uh, has made a great investment there. Well, I want it. I know, me too. And lots of other people yeah, will. Yeah, I know. But she, um, she does look a little bit like me as a child. Really? Yeah. Show me again. Uh. There's, honestly, there's a photo of me. Oh, <laughs> uh. uh, gross. Okay. Um, so I'll read you out this article yes, uh, for please. anyone who wants an update. Uh, cursed painting strikes again as London tourist attraction keeps getting flooded. So she's up now on a, like a, on a choice attraction. The oh. new owner of a cursed painting, which brought misery to its previous owners, says he and his staff have been blighted with bad luck since buying it. The infamous haunted painting of a little girl went viral after it was pictured for sale in the window of a charity shop in Hastings, East Sussex, with the warning, she's back, sold twice and returned twice. Are you brave enough? Its previous holder, Zoe Elliott Brown, claimed she was chased by a black figure after purchasing it for £25. She was so spooked, she ended up selling it to James Kislingbury, managing director of the London Bridge Experience on eBay for £1,680. I wouldn't be happy with that. Well, I think he's got a deal there. I do as well. James put the painting up in the reception of the tourist attraction, which takes guests on a walkthrough tour of the capital's history as part of their Halloween display. But the 44-year-old says he and his staff have been plagued by bad luck ever since. In fact, he claims the attraction in Tooley Street has flooded twice since the painting arrived. James said, We've had a couple of floods on site between November and December. We came in one morning and the basement was flooded. We've had small leaks in the past but nothing on this scale we're lucky that the building is quite robust so the damage wasn't too bad but it was a little unexpected i know a cynic would say it's just a coincidence but given the volume of things which keep happening i do find myself questioning whether there's more to the painting than meets the eye on the day james brought the portrait to the london bridge experience their wi-fi went down <laughs> <laughs> terrifying ah! and one of their tvs suffered an electrical fault he added after I brought the painting onto site, we kept it wrapped up in the back of the office for a while. Nobody knew it was here for a couple of weeks, but staff started reporting sightings of shadow figures following them. One member of staff even said they kept hearing footsteps behind them, but when they turned around, nothing was there. Dad of two, James, took the painting back to his family home in Reading. Jesus Christ, evening, James. In late October to do a radio interview. He just wants fame. He wants fame. At I any, don't like James. At any cost. James is getting, James wants his cash. He wants his cash at the, at the expense of I bet the he's like, right, I bet now. he's saying it's like his young employees being like, you better fucking, the Daily Mail are coming in here. You better fucking tell him you've been seeing Yeah, 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 here. yeah. Exactly. We can't, he's Why not, he's not a trustworthy source. No, he's not. Because he's got a business to and tell. And he wants, yeah, he wants But James, money if you're listening, um, we we would like to come along. <laughs> We'd like to come along. James, could you please give us, can we go on like a custody arrangement with the painting? <laughs> yeah, oh, please. That'd be fun. Oh, I'd it? love to have it up there. I think, I don't know if I'd be able to do it, actually. Mm, I would. He claims two of his appliances blew up and his, and his father-in-law was taken ill the same day. Two weeks after purchasing the portrait, James went on holiday with his family. A trip, he says, was blighted by the curse of the painting. It's like oh delays God. on easy jet, and he's like, that yeah. fucking painting. Yeah. He added, I end up hurting my shoulder badly. And we had problems on the ferry. That fucking painting has stopped me from getting to Madeira. <laughs> yeah. And with the hotel, it was a bit of a blighted holiday, to be honest. While James was away on holiday, staff put the painting up on display in the entrance to the London Bridge experience. Since then, he says visitors have heard whispers and seen shadow people, as well as claiming their own appliances have blown up when they've returned home. The managing director and his team decided to hire a medium to do a reading of the painting in November. She told them the portrait has links to a hotel in Eastbourne, East Sussex, and that the subject was likely dead when it was painted. Mm. James said, we heard all sorts of funny noises during the reading. Even the medium was quite puzzled, but she picked up on a variety of things. She believes the female subject was more than likely painted after she died and that it was a 
that it was painted by a spiritualist. She also pointed towards a building linked to the painting in Eastbourne, which is now a hotel. However, James said the reading left one of his staff members more than a bit spooked. He added, our social media chap said he was watching TV when he got home that day and it suddenly fell off the wall and smashed in front of him. Get fucked, James. <laughs> he had a lovely big expensive LED TV. Uh, from Argos, actually, uh, no. uh, which uh, was firmly bolted to the wall, and he had it quite for some time, and it literally flew off the wall. It's bizarre. Argos, if you do want to sponsor us, please get in yeah, touch. Yeah, hashtag Argos. All sorts of odd things have happened, but despite the odd occurrences, James has no plans to part with the cursed painting. I bet he soon. fucking doesn't, because he's making it all up, yeah. the liar! Cash. In fact, he has left it up in the reception area, despite taking down the other Halloween decorations. He said, it does creep me out a bit, but I've gotten used to it now. I tend to brush it off. We're no stranger to unusual things happening in this building. We have our very own plague pits in the basement. Sorry? We're planning to keep it, and we hope he can find a happy home here. Excuse me, sir. What do you mean, plague pits in the basement? Well, where he does the London Bridge experience. Obviously, it's like a... Tour I hate fashion. James. I can see him as, like, slip back, uh, Dal boy type. Yeah, a bit spivvy. Ugh, I hate him. Um, how are we going to get that fucking painting then? We need to speak to James. No, I think we need to We need to break in. Oh, yeah. I'm up for that. Well, that brings me on to my next story. Actually. Okay, yes, please. Um, I've got two teeny tiny little ones. Yes, please. This one, I've got to be honest with you, technically isn't a ghost story. Well, it's, it's not even te- nothing technical about it. It's not a ghost story. But it, f- it did make me go... Ooh. Okay. Okay. So this is from, uh, we don't know the <laughs> name of the person. This is, it's not even a story, it's just like, is a, a, it's a paragraph. I was listening, in, I was sitting in my bedroom at like 11.30 p.m. I heard a lot of stuff going on downstairs, I assumed it was my mum. I heard her walk up the stairs to my room, stop outside, so I called out to her. She didn't say anything and then she walked back downstairs. I went downstairs half an hour later to find a piece of paper with the words, you're lucky that I'm scared too on it and a whole bunch of stuff was missing and um, called mom she still hadn't arrived home from a dinner that she was at with friends i called the police and i locked myself in the bathroom i think the burglars left when they realized that i was still at home it's probably the most scared i've ever been when i was hiding in the bathroom so she was just in a room and that creaking sheared outside was okay. an intruder but how fucking freaky is that oh, so why would a burglar leave a note i know it does seem a bit ridiculous but like ca- kind of heartwarming that she didn't get murdered <laughs> My standards are low. I mean, to get... Take all of her stuff, but... Is it, this is some, something someone sent us in? No. Oh, fine. That's something um, I found. I thought that the post-it note being like, I'm scared too. Yeah. Makes me think that something else was in the house. Well, maybe it was. I think that's... You're lucky that I'm scared too. Yeah. But stuff was missing. Yeah, you're right. Ro- maybe I mean? like, she got robbed... But there was also a ghost. And, that and literally, that burglar was like, I could have come up and fucking garroted you. Yeah. But... I saw the creepy oh, woman Oh, they're the scared of the thing. Yeah. Uh, That's what makes it creepy. That's gross. I just, I would never be able to not hear that creak again, but like, mm. mom, and know that just on the other side of a door. Oh, no, no, don't. Oh. Okay, I've got one more tiny one. Yes, please. In high school, my friends and I were messing around with a Ouija board one night. Oh. We'd done it before and nothing remarkable had ever really happened. We usually did it to try and scare each other or our girlfriends. We all thought it was a joke. That night, there was no one else home except for seven of us, and we were all together around the board. One of the girls there wanting to try it. She'd never done it before. This time, it was different. The board misspelled some of the words the same way every time. It gave answers that seemed really historically accurate for our town, things that we neither knew or cared about. Long story short, the spirit claimed it was a 10-year-old boy who had died on the property in the 1800s and was buried there too in an unmarked grave. My friend's house was on a farm at the edge of town. We were all a little freaked out because the board had never been so detailed and consistent. However, we were all still skeptical and we were all assuming one of us was trying to scare the rest. Finally, my friend asked the spirit, uh, finally, my friend asked if the spirit could do something to prove he was still there with us. It went to yes and then spelled out K N O C K. Then the planchette stopped moving. We all stared at it silently. And then... Uh, rap, rap, rap on the window right next to us. The lights were outside and there was absolutely no one out there. We never touched that fucking board again. Uh, oh! 
knock. Have you heard a knock coming from over there? I, would you shit yourself? Probably, yeah. Because I fucking would. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I say don't mess with the Ouija board. Mm. I do love to mess. Oh, I mean, we like, mess with the Ouija board for a job. We do love to mess. So, because we've done so many Bloody Mary attempts to contact, I thought I'd tell you a bit about the background story. Yes, please. Do you know about the background story? I think I did a vague... Um, a vague song. idea. Yeah, but... This is the real story of Bloody Mary. You're probably wondering if she's real or just an urban legend. Well, the truth is, she's real. Or at least she was real. The legend of Bloody Mary is based on a true story. According to the legend, you have to stand in a bathroom with one candle lit. Oh, that's where we've been going wrong. We haven't got a candle. Or a bathroom. Or a bathroom. <laughs> 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 so. We haven't got a bathroom between us. <laughs> with one candle and say the name Bloody the Mary. <laughs> <laughs> into the mirror three times in a row. Uh-huh. It is only the bravest of children who would attempt... Oh, also, you've got to be a child. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. We've been needles. I, I, do you know what? <laughs> Listen, wait till I make Blowing. a bit more cash. I'm going to look four. Yeah. <laughs> if you see her ghostly face in the mirror, it could have one of the following terrible consequences. Ooh. Your eyes being ripped out and your face being horribly scarred. Being found dead with claw marks all over your face and body. Or disappearing mysteriously from the bathroom and ending up trapped in the mirror with the ghost for eternity. You could also be driven insane or drop dead on the spot. No one knows. <laughs> the history of the game is based on mixed up legends and history that over the years have become the main basis for the story surrounding the urban legend. The most common story is that Bloody Mary was a witch that lived over 100 years ago who dabbled in the black art. See, I don't put much clout in this because it's mm. just men saying that women who are a bit kooky... Yeah. Or a witch. Yeah, or a bit. If I, if we lived in the 1600s, we'd be fucking dead. Oh, hundred percent. So dead. Yeah. As soon as we rejected anyone's advances, it'd be like burn her. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the second story is more modern. A local woman was involved in a fatal car accident, and her face was horribly scarred before she died. She reappears in the mirror when she's summoned with that same horrific face. Bit rude. There's this another suggestion that the name was Mary Worth, which was derived from a victim of the Salem witch trials. The fourth story is that Bloody Mary is based on a historical figure. Mm. Yes, that's right. Queen Mary the First of England. Oh, really? Yeah, what, the Mary one with Tudor. The ginger perm? No, this lady. Uh, oh, her sister, Mary mm, Queen of Scots. Or something. Yeah, I don't really. I don't think we should oh, go into history. Well, I, I thought that know. Henry VIII had about ten wives. Um, so that's interesting, isn't it? There's no one really knows what her name is. She could be Mary Johnson, Mary Lou, Mary Weatherby. Elizabeth Bathory or Mary Wales, Mary Worthington, but they are the options. So a, a Mary, yeah, a Ma- it's definitely a Mary. Mary. Yeah, definitely. It's we're hard on the Mary facts. <laughs> so, so I like the idea that it's a why queen. bloody because she 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 shows in the mirror like as a face all like. Blah. Does she? Yeah, scarred and clawed. Oh uh, right, it's so like she's not beheaded. Well, it would remove Thank the you. face, wouldn't it? <laughs> she wouldn't. There wouldn't be yeah, a no, face there. I know, but it could there. be like hanging off. Oh, like Harry Potter. Yeah, like yeah. Harry Potter. No, I think she's just clawed and she was just okay. Treated poorly because everyone thought she was a witch. Mm, well, I I really hate that for women and yeah, it's annoyed me a little bit. Actually, yeah, I just that. like, oh, God, like yeah. we did with our. If you look on Patreon, we tell you all about Molly Lee. Yes, and this poor fucking witch yes. from Stoke on Trent. Poor bitch. Poor bitch. And she basically was completely like hounded out of town and killed wrongly yeah. just because she was fiddling. Just the, because, well, I think because she wasn't married. Wasn't married. And she had watered a, down the milk. It's good business, actually. She also acting. had a pet crow. And li- now, that's not a great image for <laughs> when witch, like, witch um, accusations are flying about. Sticks to a fucking hamster. Yeah, like, get a guinea pig. Get Don't guinea have pig. the crow on your shoulder and be like, no, no, I feel no, like no. that was a piss take. Though. I think she was like, they think I'm fucking weird. Wait till I show them my pet. Yeah, but then to be fair, <laughs> yeah. Wait but till I take the I crow for she, a walk. She doubled down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A Come little- on. A little crow lead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because <Come on. laughs> I, I do understand that. I, I would kind of ham up that if people were like terrified of me. I'd be like, yeah. And she came back. To be fair, she was a witch. So. She came back. Go and listen to the full story on right. patreon.com slash ghost mm, This is called A Phone Call with My Husband. How are you doing? My heart melts when I hear his voice. I'm doing okay, I say. I can't help but smile. How are the kids? They miss you. I bring the phone into the playroom. Hey, Isabel Jackson, say hi to daddy. Isabel smiles and leans into the phone. Hi, daddy. 
she says. At only four, she's already such a wonderful little sweetheart. But when I bring the phone to Jackson, his face goes cold. He shakes his head furiously. No! Uh, fuck off, Dad. Why not? He pauses, glaring at me. That's not my real daddy. Jackson! It's not! It's not! He screams. He shakes his head wildly, stomping on the ground. It's not my daddy! I pull the phone away on the verge of tears. I'm sorry, he's been acting up lately. I can't... It's okay. I understand. A laugh comes through the other line, cut with a bit of static. I was like that too when I was four. Six, corrected him. Oh no. Jackson's six. This is bad news. A pause. I miss you so much, I tell him. I miss you too. I want to tell him more, so much more, but there isn't much time. I pull it away from my ear and stare at the screen. I pull out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I pull out. <laughs> So we could have no more of these shitty kids. <laughs> he's not actually on the phone. He's, just <laughs> he's in me. <laughs> in, in the kitchen. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I think we've really lowballed this whole really? episode. Really? Oh, yeah, there's just been dicks. This has been the most guttural fucking episode. <laughs> um, apologies. Um, I pull the phone away from my ear and stare at the screen. One minute, 17 seconds remaining. So I asked him to tell me about our first date at that Italian restaurant on the lake. Oh, is he in prison? It sounds exactly like the way he used to tell it to our friends. All the laughs timed at the right places when I spilled a glass of wine on myself, when we ran out into the pouring rain. And then, after he's done, I hear the dreaded beep. I, whis I whisper goodbye and pull the phone away from my ear. Your call with Memorial AI has ended. Oh. Pay $59. $99 for five more minutes. I glance up at the mantle, the photos of us, smiling, beaming, arms around each other, and in the center, a cold, stone gray urn. I'm lucky that Daniel posted so much of his life online. I always complained about his time on Facebook and Instagram and all his vlogging attempts on YouTube, but now, now that I can hear his voice and talk to him, two years after his death, I'm eternally thankful. Jesus! Because without all that material, the AI wouldn't have much to train itself on. I wipe my eyes. Then I click the button for five more minutes. How much was it again? $59.99. Oh, my God! Yeah. That's extortionate! I know, extortion from grief. Outrageous. Ah, that's the true horror Memorial of this AI. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting prison. Good, isn't it? Yeah, that was good. But also, like, that is coming, isn't it? Uh, like, what? Like, that, that sorry. sort of... <laughs> Your I'm head like, is literally it. filth. It's just You're like, I don't want your fucking oyster. <laughs> <laughs> she pulled out of his dick. I'm like, It's what? because me and Adam went to a seafood restaurant Fuck yesterday. Sake. And Adam had an oyster and I was like, I fucking hate oysters so much. But I do real. I thought, is, you know, they're supposed to be like a um, an aphrodisiac. I thought, is it because they kind of are in a kind of similar shape as a vagina? Is that why? I don't know, because okay. they, they have norovirus in them. What, and do oysters? Yeah. Oh. They are the worst. I didn't have any. Aphrodisiac. They're an aphrodisiac. Aphrodisiac. Afro How do you say it? Aphrodisiac. Okay, all three of us have said it. very different. We said very different. <laughs> it's one of those things. Well, um, um, I, I, it is coming. It is definitely, that is going to be yeah, in the Memorial next like, five AI. years. Yeah. 60 pounds. Well, I know, but like, that's um, preying on vulnerable people, isn't it? People I don't like, think I'd bother. Also, like, not like. do you remember when um, Kim Kardashian had a dad as oh, a hologram? Yeah, it's a similar crazy. sort of vibe, and it was given to her from Ye. It's creepy. Mm. It's, have you ever seen that Black Mirror episode? Is that a similar thing? Yeah, well, the, he actually comes back. That he's like a walking, talking. But surely that Aye. that is going to happen, isn't it? Yeah, but I don't. I don't it's think I'd be bothered about that. Like young Abba. I'd be like, I'm not. Oh, I won't bother. Just listen to voice notes and stuff. Yeah, Abba. Fuck. Yeah. I mean, they're not dead, but scary, scary world. Um, very political okay. episode. Are you ready for creep of the week? Yes, please. Okay. Creep of the, the week. week. Creep of the week. week. Creep of the week. Creep of the week. Creep of the week. week. That's the Adam's family. I hope it was not true. No, no, no. I can't keep saying it. Otherwise we'll get in trouble. That's my catchphrase. Okay, welcome to Creep of the Week. What you got, Hannah? I've got a story for you. That's lovely. I woke up from what felt like a three-year sleep, gagging for a glass of water. I looked at the time on my pink alarm clock, 4.27 a.m. I signed and leaned over to grab my water bottle, took a huge gulp and placed it back down. As I did so, I noticed the shadow of a figure 
standing near the door to my bedroom. I sat up trying to adjust my eyes to the darkness surrounding my room. My first thought was that my sister had been asleep, has been sleepwalking again. It wasn't uncommon for her to do this, but it was where she, rare she would come into my room. I fucking hate sleepwalking. If you sleepwalk, handcuff yourself to the bed because it's creepy as fuck. It is creepy as shit. It wasn't uncommon for doing it, but she, well, she wouldn't come into my room. In fact, it was so rare that it could never have happened. I stared at the shadow a little longer. No more than a minute, though. It was quite tall with a lot of hair and seemed to wear a dress or nighty. It was clear as day. Oi, I whispered. Lacey? Nothing. I whispered her name a couple more times before deciding to just leave her be, hoping she'd go back to bed. I read on the internet that it was bad to wake a sleepwalker up. You should just let them do their thing till they wake up. Being a creepy cunt. Pulling the covers up over my head, I drifted back off to sleep. I blinked and I was woken, still under my covers, to the sound of my alarm going off. Quickly, turning it off, I threw it on my dressing gown and slippers and stumbled downstairs. The smell of breakfast soon woke me up as we all sat down to eat. Lacey, you were sleepwalking again last night. I laughed. Ha ha ha! Sorry, I didn't do the laugh. How would you know that? She replied cockily. I was at Sarah's all night. Sarah was a strange best friend who always seemed to be getting her into trouble. I didn't reply, just sat in silence for the rest of the morning. That afternoon, I was left alone as everyone else had gone out. I took Jerry, my German shepherd, out for a walk. That's a cute name for a dog, that. Aw, Jerry. I was so desperate for a wee halfway through that I had to cut the walk short and take him back home. Sorry, buddy, I said, running up to the loo. I sat on the toilet, scrolling through TikTok, as you do, and (laughs) suddenly heard, I've sat on the toilet after having a piss for like three hours. Well, that's when I was discovered naked in Italy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just literally tits on my thighs. Tits on tits, thighs. Tits out. God, just naked bodies today in this podcast. That was the worst moment of 2023 for me. <laughs> I think about it more than I should, to be honest. It's hilarious. <laughs> um, I sat on the toilet scrolling through TikTok and suddenly heard a loud noise coming from my room. Oh. I ran in not knowing what to expect. It was my speakers that connected to my radio. They were on, so was my radio. Playing the sound from the TikTok video I was watching, but glitching every few seconds. What the fuck? I thought. I hadn't turned it on since the other day. I stared in shock. Michelle! I heard Lacey shout. Finally, I thought as I ran downstairs. Oh, you're home. You'll never guess what. Nothing. Nobody was there. I went over to the window. No car either. Jerry was sat by the back door and I walked over to him slowly. Hey, boy, I said in a soft tone. What are you looking at? Do you want a treat? Even Jerry didn't look. He just kept his eye on whatever was in the garden. As I got closer to the window, I noticed what he was looking at. Behind the apple tree, at the bottom of my garden, there was a shadowy figure. It was the one from my room. But this time, it was staring right at my house, its eyes looking straight through the window. Oh, God. Is that from Michelle? That's... Could be, yeah. I think she might have changed her name, actually. Oh, fine. Yeah, I think she's changed her name. Oh, my God. That is absolutely terrifying. Isn't that terrifying? I think, I'm thinking, like, oh, it's just my sister. I would I feel really that. comforted knowing that a, a German shepherd was there, Jerry. I like the, I like the addition of the I doggy. don't know. Their dogs really freak me out because they start looking at things then know, that you can't quite describe. And it's very, very so, annoying. So she's not only got a ghost, it's a mimic as well. <laughs> it's a mime. It's a mimicky, mammy oh, ghost. Do you remember the mime story? That was I think that's one of the most scary ones yeah, I Bam. agree. I think it is. I like the mime the in the mime. vents. Oh, you just—it's one of the, you know when you think that everything's normal and then you I'm see something shivered. that's been there for ages. Yeah, and just l- looking from oh! the slats. Yeah, horrible. Like... horrible, 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 horrible. Um, okay, do you want to play a game? Yes. Okay, so we had this sent in by a listener. Mm-hmm. So basically, Susie, what I want you to do yes. is pick two of the tarot cards. Oh, lovely. Two this time. Pick whichever two you fancy. Pick a couple of tarot. Oh, what have we got here? Yeah, what we got two. there? Which ones have you picked? So the Empress ah. and the King. Oh my God! Okay, well, what do they mean? The Empress and the King of Pentacles. That's like King and Queen. The Empress. That's kind of mad. Wow. The Empress and the King of Pentacles. The King symbolizes long-term success. Oh. He has the same passion as the other cards, but the maturity to thrive. Mm. Love it. <laughs> yeah. What's the other one? The Empress. Yeah. She looks bad. Oh, like my perfume. Also, she's got such a lovely head bad crown. Ass. Let me see. Look at her crown. Oh, daisies. Starry crown. Daisies. Daisies. The high priestess. I'd feel like I'd quite like that one. Oh, my point, God. Empress and King. Are they, these from both from the Major Arcana then, eh? Major Arcana. The Empress. The Empress represents beauty. 
yeah. maturing in abundance. She's calm and content with her life. The Empress indicates the need to relax and allow things to happen naturally. The Empress encourages connecting with one's more feminine traits and create beauty. Artistic expression and connecting th with nature are representative of the cards. What a lovely couple of cards. Stunning. Right, put them in a... And then she's like, now thing. burn them. <laughs> <laughs> no, then they are, no, that's the complete opposite of what you are. But uh, stand them up, like in a little V, like yeah. next to each other like that. Yeah, facing okay. each other. Yeah. That's, oh God, the true skill. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. I want you to ask it a question. Okay. Um, I want, oh, you need to decide. If it, if it falls right, it's a yes. And if it falls left, it's a no. So if it goes... Well, I'm going to blow on it directly into the thing in whichever way it okay. falls. Okay. So right is... Yeah. Right is yes and left is no. Left is no. You're right and you're left. Okay. Um, will um, my new concealer really suit me? <gasps> yes! Oh my god, that was you a bit see spooky, that? It? Yeah, do it again. Okay, you got I another one? Something else? Yeah. Um, um, will our tour be the best tour that's ever been? <gasps> what does that mean? What does that mean? It, it just both it, fell it went in, on, in each on itself. Other. <laughs> I'm going to guess that it's going to. Yes, is, and no. It is. <laughs> well, it's going to be hard work, but we already knew that. Yeah. That's wow. Want to do one more? Yeah. Um, okay. Mm. Oh, shit. Okay. Ah, uh, motherfucker. Right. If, if you're not watching, I'm just trying to make two cards stand against each other. Okay, here's my question. Is Hannah going to have a lovely birthday <gasps> this week? Oh, yes, we're going for my birthday. <laughs> yeah, okay. Birthday girl. Which way do I need to go? Do you don't blow on it with trying to you have to just blow. I can't remember which way I said. <gasps> yes! Is that good? Yes! Oh, thank fuck for that, guys. <laughs> She's gonna have a good birthday. Yay! Yes! Well, thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you do want more content, if you cannot get enough, head on over to patreon.com yeah. slash ghost tons. You can get you can sign up, you can get hours and hours and hours of content. That's for where the we price. dish all the goss. That's where we dish all the goss. We've got we've got films on there that we've made ourselves. Ghost hunts, we go on. It's hours and hours and hours of ghost hunts. Oh, and we're dinner. um thinking if we're gonna shoot like um a short film. I think we're gonna do like a, a little scary film. Like a little horror short. We're gonna yes. put it up on Patreon. Um yes. just just because why not? Let's Why let's not? fucking get scared together. Very funny. Um, so go and do it. It's literally four pound fifty. It's not even the price of a coffee. Go and head you over to well. Patreon. Dot in this dark, dry January. Well, we're not doing dry January. Are we? No, fuck it. If anything, I'm just gonna be. All, I'm always pissed. Pissed now. I'm gonna have a glass of wine tonight. Yeah, fuck it. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks, Bye. Everybody. Bye.